<clears throat> Hi, everybody. Welcome to the quarantine series. I'm your host, Kabir Segel, coming to you live from the ATL, Atlanta, Georgia. All right. Thanks for watching, everyone around the world. And thanks to everyone watching downstairs, my mom and dad. Thanks for tuning in. So, look, a quarantine series is all about um, shining the spotlight on creative people. These are the filmmakers, the authors, the musicians, the jugglers. Conceptual jugglers, that is. So look, we just want to put the spotlight on, on these people who are making our world a little bit more um, interesting, creating the stories um, to uh, en enrich our lives, add more soul to our lives. So if you can, please support the, uh, the projects you learn about on this broadcast. And um, I think it's also important to think uh, locally and to support the uh, local filmmakers, local film festivals, you know, the bookshop, whatever we can do to be there for the creative community, please be there. All right, so if you want to learn who will be on the broadcast, pretty easy. Just subscribe to my social media, and you'll be notified as to who is on, when they're on, and so you'll be in the loop. Uh, you can also ask questions. I don't have to ask all the questions. You know, drop a question in the comment field. Um, if you're watching live or if you're watching on the rebroadcast, let us know what is on your mind, right? And um, it's always interesting where you, to know where you're watching from. So we got, you know, SoCal in the house today. We got Atlanta in the house today. So let us know where you're watching from. Drop a comment. Um, let us know city, state, county, area code, province. I'm getting really good at learning most of the provinces in the world. So um, let me know. Cool. So now for the um, the main event, why you're all here to meet the terrific um, filmmaker. Truly is a wonderful filmmaker doing things at a very, very high level. He's an award-winning film and television writer, director. He, uh, his films include Monday, which has won many festival awards. Um, we'll, we'll talk about that. He's also directed um, the season finale of NBC's New Amsterdam. I'll talk about, also talk about that. Please welcome to the show the incredible master himself, Dean Tai. Welcome. Hi, Kabir. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Thanks for the uh, warm intro. Of course, of course. I was warm here. So, um, so look, tell me first, how has the quarantine affected you? How has it affected some of your projects? Uh, let's see. I caught COVID in March. Um, and so I suffered through that for about two to three weeks. It was very new at the time and, um, I got through it. Um, in regards to projects, you know, directing is a challenge. Directing television is a challenge and, uh, getting hired in the past, um, you know, eight or nine months has been, uh, very slim for me. So, I've been really fortunate to be writing and co-writing on a pilot for one of these streamers. Um, and so my shift in focus has been very uh, individual as opposed to the team effort of uh, directing television. Um, although I am co-writing, it's uh, you know one-on-one -on -one as opposed to uh, one, -on one with many. And so I've had a chance to develop um, my writing creativity skills, my writing learning skills, and be led by a really amazing showrunner that I can't name at the moment. We're very uh, friendly and familiar with unnamed sources, so that's okay. It's gonna, <laughs> we can do that here. So like, I wanna ask you about your daily routine. What is it like in quarantine? Um, how do you structure your time so that you get the most out of it? Or, or is it just, do you unstructure it? Yeah, I'm a pretty, um, unstructured type of person. Uh, I'm pretty, I rely heavily on inspiration and spontaneity. And so when it comes to writing, uh, when I know I have a deadline, I have to sit here and, uh, and put the words down onto the page, but it is not, you know, it is not very diligent. It is a lot of, um, drifting away and thinking of stuff and arguing with myself and, uh, you know, rereading notes, rereading, um, emails and looking for and really troubleshooting creative ideas before I put them down on paper. Um, and so it happens throughout the day. It happens in the middle of the night. I find that seconds or minutes before, um, I find that seconds or minutes before I'm about to fall asleep. There's this really incredible moment of autopilot for my mind. It's clear, it's free. And then I try to like, think about, some of these uh, creative um, challenges that I'm facing. And at that moment, I'll have to re-wake up and write it down, or at least tell myself to try to remember, which has been really interesting to, to wake up, you know, eight hours later and go, what was I thinking? And when I'm successful at not waking up, 
right when I'm about to fall asleep and writing it and, and, but, you know, taking the eight hour sleep cycle, waking up and trying to remember when I'm successful at that, I feel like I, I gained something. There's like a skill to be um, honed in on that. Um, and, you know, uh, that's a challenge to be falling asleep, thinking of an idea, holding on to the idea and then wake up and remember the idea. And sometimes I'm successful and uh, it allows me to, to sleep normally. I'm glad you're able to, to get into that place with REM sleep. I'm glad yeah. thank you also for sharing that because I think it's important for the audience to just know how you how you think about your time and how you're creating these incredible projects in its midst. So uh, let's talk a little bit about um, your project Monday. Um, what is that about, and uh, why did you get in? Why and how did you get involved with it? Um, so I uh, I studied film, graduated in 2002, and went into commercial directing, and uh, you know have managed to um, stay afloat in that industry as an editor, as a director, and sometimes as a copywriter. Um, but it was not very fruitful. It's off, obviously very fulfilling, but it's not very fruitful. Um, it is very competitive, and um, always having to bid and pitch only to not um, get awarded the job. There was a year where um, we pitched for about a dozen projects and did not receive any awards for those. Um, and at some point it was, we were really lucky. My, um, my creative slash business partner friend and I started a production company. And through that, we honed our skills. We, um, you know, um, made a lot of content and made a lot of friends who are filmmakers. And there was this serendipitous moment where the only thing really missing was a script. And I hadn't written anything since 2002. And so I took a shot at writing out Monday um, and it went through, you know, 20 something plus drafts. Um, but within a month we had a script that we all thought was good enough. Um, and we had money in the bank and we had, you know, computers at the office and friends who are as I said, filmmakers, and we all came together and spent, you know, a good amount of money to keep everyone happy and to keep us um, on the right track in regards to production. And then um, we prepped it in a couple of weeks. We um, shot it over three or four days, and then we cut it uh, in about two weeks and submitted it to the HBO APA Visionaries contest, which was the uh, inaugural contest. It was the first one in 2017. And, you know, months later, we received some really surprising and positive news about the contest, which I had to keep secret for months uh, into the year. Um, that's a screenshot from Monday. Uh, and, uh, and so that, that recognition really gave me confidence that I could write and direct. And writing is a very intimidating process for me because uh, I like breaking rules and I don't know much about the structure of story and um but i really enjoy just exploring um unconventional characters and in, in unconventional situations even though some of the situations themselves are cliche or conventional but it's really this tetris puzzle that you know i really enjoy rearranging when it comes to writing and and that's probably what uh attributes to the lengthy process for me when I do write, it's not very fluid. It doesn't just spill out. Um, it, I put a lot of thought and I especially second guess my creativity a lot. Something that I learned recently in the past few years was, you know, we have an instinct, I have an instinct. I think about that first instinct, but then I question the first instinct and I look for the second instinct. And it usually, there's some magic in between trying to um, discard the first instinct and trying to settle into the second instinct there's a good mix of creativity inside of that and uh and that takes time you know that's a process for me and and it's been been very um fulfilling to second guess myself that way and of course i don't really openly talk about it in such a way but it does happen like it happens internally in my mind and in, in my heart and in my gut and uh and something really interesting happens at the uh, on the other side of that Awesome. I appreciate you sharing that. Put your producer hat on for a second and talk about the creative team, how you wanted to bring sort of the best team possible to the project. So, you know, having 
um, at one point having my own production company and working with money and having to put out bids and, and think about creativity all, all at the same time, Monday was written in a way where we didn't use a car. We didn't mount cameras on cars. And so that's why the character is on a bicycle. Um, and then, and that in itself creatively, create creatively create, created a really interesting dynamic for the character, you know, and it also justified some of the logic in which the character could get away with some of the activities that he was involved with. Um, working with friends is a very amazing uh, opportunity. There is, you know, there is a camaraderie that happens. There, there were some, you know, new faces on set with us. The, uh, the entire cast were, um, were actors that I didn't know. Um, but we, we built a rapport, and I felt like um, that serendipitous coming together of uh, filmmaking, friends, and passion created this really, this lightning in a bottle effect with the short. Everything, you know, if, if, you, if some of you get a chance to watch it, it, it almost felt the way you, the production almost felt similar to the way the, uh, the short is presented in this high paced, you know, rhythmic, very spontaneous and hopefully naturalistic, um, you know, uh, product project. Yeah, it certainly feels like that. And where can people, uh, maybe you mentioned that, where can people experience this project now? Um, it's a short, it lives on my website, uh, dintai.com, D-I-N-H-T-H-A-I.com. And then there are links to a uh, Vimeo platform as well as YouTube and Amazon. Is there anything that, um, was in the it was left out <laughs> that you wanted to put in. I know these shorts are very, very judicious. These what you have to leave in, and what was, what did you, um, what, what was difficult for you to cut in the final version? We um, the original edit was about twenty minutes and without credits, and so there was an opportunity to um, to heighten the experience and technically to just get it down to something that's you know watchable. And so there are, you know, there are breaths of moments that uh, the actors and the characters are experiencing uh, with each other that were just had to be taken out for the sake of, you know, time and, and for the sake of the style of this, uh, this rhythm that we were trying to accomplish. And so it is unconventional that there are moments where we don't linger on them. And I, when we discovered the effect of cutting more out it it certainly inspired us to try to do that more often and then you know um the the rhythm of the short does take a turn towards the middle and and, I, and it makes the turn much more valuable yeah i appreciate you sharing that let's switch gears and talk a little bit about new amsterdam um kind of a well-known series here so talk about how you got involved with it and uh, your role uh let's see uh through the success of Monday, uh, the short, I submitted to a handful of uh, directing programs. One of them uh, is the NBC Universal Emerging Directors Program. And um, I was one of like maybe eight or nine who were finalists. And the process of that was very competitive that I, I believe maybe 20 people were semifinalists. And um, so 20 of, 20 of our fellows, our work were submitted to a handful of NBC shows and their showrunners and their producing directors. I believe my uh, work was sent to four different shows and New Amsterdam was the only one to call back. Maybe, you know, they sensed, um, they, maybe they vibe with the work more than the other shows did, but I was really fortunate to only have one interview and we received as a group, we received um, a handful of workshops and one of them really stands out to me. It was a phone call by a um, producing director and she gave us some really amazing advice. And the advice was like, you know, talk like a director. And I had forgotten what that meant. Um, and it, it was an incredible reminder. And so when I went back to study New Amsterdam and watch the show like a director, 
and take notes like a director, I was able to really be successful in that interview with the two producing directors of New Amsterdam. Um, and luckily, they selected me to be the shadow uh, for the season. Uh, and I shadowed for about seven weeks in New York. Um, and then fast forward a few months later, maybe five or six months later, uh, I went back and directed my first episode of television. Very cool. What does that mean? Talk like a director. Give me an example of like what that sounds like. So it, it's, it, you could use any words you want, but it's really referencing the cinematic style of certain moments inside of a show or a, um, a film that you really enjoy. And with New Amsterdam, there was a visual motif that um, they, uh, the the show really loves to use. And there they are these sort of two shots walking down the hallway, one takes, uh, where there's a lot of information being exchanged, but you're essentially, that's a visual language that they really love. And, and they also really like keeping moments inside of a one take. Of course, you're always going to cut away, but there's a lot of activity that's happening. If you notice some of the background stuff, you know, those are all actors, background actors, and they're all trying their best to fake that they're doing something back there. And so there's a lot of life that happens beyond the four edges of the composition. And something that I pointed out that we discussed in the New Amsterdam interview with the producing directors was this wonder that happens in the hallways. And that theme happens in every episode at least once. And there was one very specific shot that um, replicated that visual theme, but then broke it and brought it back. And when we talked about it in the room, it, it sounded like the three of us who were all directors were geeking out over you know, this creative technology, this technically creative approach to storytelling. And I think that's what directors sound like. I don't know. <laughs> you sound like a director, uh, very much so. So sure. what, what happens like, what happened after um, New Amsterdam? What was the response like? How did that impact your career? Um, all? The response from the producing directors uh, and the showrunner were uh, very positive. You know, I never know if, what they say is true or what people say is true, but I sort of default to the, well, people don't really have to be nice. And when they are, I try to take it as genuine as possible. Um, you know, I, I do have a lot of experience in directing, but there's always so much room to learn and improve. And I felt like, um, I felt like I performed as best as I could. So I would give myself a 10 out of 10, but then when I reflect back at it, I go, uh, that was probably a six out of 10. And I, so that is a really good feeling. I, I know that all the lessons that I learned uh, with New Amsterdam, I'm really itching to go back and express those lessons creatively uh, on my second go around. Got it, got it, got it. Uh, who are some of your um, inspirations as a filmmaker? I know that's really broad, but who are some people you admire? It is, you know, it changes all the time. Um, yeah. I usually like to talk about the film that they make. Um, Point Break was a really interesting, had a really interesting effect on me. It felt very polished yet raw, but also very naturalistic. And um, and I really like that era of photography when it comes to cinema. Um, Scorsese's uh, Goodfellas had a huge impact on me when I was uh, growing up. Uh, we used to we used to smoke a lot of weed and get really high and uh, watch that movie over and over again. And, uh, and that had a really, really big influence on, on just how characters are, you know, I, w I wanted to say like the actual technical craft of filmmaking, but when I realized how important Goodfellas is to me, it's because of character. Uh, Memento is a really interesting film. It breaks a lot of rules and resets audience's expectations. And I feel like, you know, that's a probably a top hit for me. And then uh, the prestige as a film, as a, as a storytelling visual medium, that film inside of it in its themes are very quote unquote magical. And if you can decipher 
what is being said inside of the film through the stories and through the characters and take that into every scene that um, you make, you might replicate something very enjoyable to watch. That's try, what I try to do with the things that I make is, uh, is try to reference back to what the prestige is preaching and try to implement that into each scene. Got it. Well, um, I want to thank you so much for being on the show. Let's get your website up there again so we can take a look. And Ty, there it is, dot com. Um, yeah. Being on the show. Thanks for having me, Kabir. It's uh, great to see you. I appreciate you. I appreciate what you do. And uh, I hope look forward to, uh, to seeing you in person at some point. Likewise, likewise. I'm flattered. All right. So that's our show today. Um, please check out his website. And uh, let's just talk about going forward. Um, if you want to uh, learn who will be on the show, you can just subscribe to my social media and we go from there. So have a great day. Stay safe. Take care. All the best.